we're gonna restore a 1960 Jazzmaster today. Uh, the frets are uh, worn away and we need to replace them. Uh, so I'm gonna let you in on uh, that process and hopefully you'll enjoy it. Great, okay. The first part of the job is to take the neck off and take the tuners off. And that starts by taking the strings off. So that's where we'll begin. This guitar has never been uh, refretted before and the customer is definitely a player. Some people would probably say that you shouldn't refret an old guitar like that and in some cases maybe they're right. But um, this guitar um, desperately needs one and the customer is more concerned about playability than he is about uh, the vintage value of it. So, um, and I don't even know whether or not changing frets really matters for the value of, uh, of a guitar as long as it's done properly. But um, we're replacing it with the vintage frets also, so um, it'll be the same size as uh, these ones. So, no surprise here, there's a few uh, shims in the neck. Um, that's pretty common for a lot of these, although not quite ideal. So uh, we'll take those out and uh, replace it with something better. So are these from the factory? You no, uh, no, these aren't from the factory. Someone put this in, especially necessary on the Jazz Masters, just because they have, um, they, a lot of them have a neck angle issue. And um, to compensate for that, you know, people put various things in their credit cards or plastic material or whatever. And they get it in the right, uh, right angle, and that's probably fine, but uh, the problem is you end up developing a bit of a kink in the neck because you're tightening the screws also, which, yeah, it does bring the, the neck into a different angle, but it also creates this hump at the end, which is kind of hard to remove, especially on those fingerboards that aren't as thick as this one. Just putting some, uh, some tape on the tuners because I want to mark which one's which um, so they go back into the same hole that they're, they came from. I, I find that's important, especially on vintage guitars, just because... Um, you know, you don't want to do anything that could possibly uh, uh, make a problem for yourself. So if there's a difference in the size of the bushing or just anything, I want to just make sure that it goes back exactly the way it was. Why would you need to remove the tuners when you are doing a refret? Um, I'm just deciding to do it because um, it's, it's good to have uh, access to everything. And uh, when I install frets, I like to hammer them in. Uh, and it's nice that the neck lays completely flat when I do that. Um, and actually, this surface here and this surface is on a plane. So when you put it like this, it's pretty stable. And I don't want to, if I had the tuners there, you know, all the work that I would be doing would probably distort something. I'm gonna take the nut out of this guitar. I want to be extra careful in this area. It's I I, I knock them out with uh, this special tool, and um, but it, I, I want to be very careful that I don't uh, mess up any other wood here. So I'm just gonna knock very carefully. There she goes. Just gonna check the status of the straightness of the neck right now. Uh, we know it had shims in it, which makes me uh, a little concerned that there is a hump. And um, oh yeah, there's definitely a hump here. It almost looks like the neck has too much bow, but I think in reality we're dealing with a hump. So I'm gonna try to straighten the neck as much as I can to see if I get a better visual on uh, on what it looks like. How is it to, to straighten the neck when you don't have the tension on the strings? So I took some mental notes on how the neck was bowing earlier and um, right now I've, um, I'm just trying to get it um, as straight as I can uh, so I don't take off more wood when I'm leveling the board than I need to. I know I'm going to be dealing with um, a little bit of sanding. It's very important for me not to sand off more wood than I absolutely have to. This is Brazilian rosewood, and uh, I mean, the, what you sand off, you can never put back on again. So I want to be very conservative. Um, I know that I'm going to have to do a little extra sanding up here just because of the shims. So um, this, this has the thicker fretboard. Uh, some of them have the veneered fretboards, which are 
you know, about this thin all the way across. And uh, that makes it a lot harder to deal with those humps and sometimes you, you can't. But since this has more wood, I think we can, think we can um, uh, get rid of it. So we'll see. I'm gonna take the frets off now and uh, that starts with uh, heating them up. So I'm gonna get the soldering iron. Here's the date, by the way. It says 1260. So it's an old one. It has an R under here. I don't quite know what that means. Maybe someone else does. It's a pretty nice neck. It's, uh, I mean, it's, it's somewhat flats on. Not quite. And uh, the truss rod is working really well, so that makes me happy. So I'm using a soldering iron to heat up the frets before I take them out. These frets were actually put in sideways. Um, which um, means that taking them out, pulling them straight up can damage them a little bit um, or damage the fretboard around because you're, you're kind of pulling something through a slot that's never been put in that way. So there's two ways to take these frets out. Either you have to knock them out sideways, kind of continue the motion that they had at the factory, um, or you have to pull them up and be careful. They, each way has its advantages and disadvantages, so I'm going to try both and see which one the fretboard uh, uh, wants to have done to it. Um, sometimes if you put it sideways, you can get some chipping here, and I definitely don't like that. So um, we'll see which one is better for this guitar. The reason I'm warming it up is that sometimes there's glue in there, sometimes it just, it just boils the oil around the fret a little bit and that seems to make them just slide out a little better. So this first one I'm gonna to try to do sideways and we'll see how that is. No, it doesn't seem to quite wanna do that. I'll try a little bit longer. So this pretty much illustrates what I'm talking about. The, um, uh, the slot here remains, you know, uh, beautiful and untouched, but right here you're getting some chip out, and I really don't like to see that, so I'm going to try to pull it upwards on the next one to see how that is. So where did you learn to do this slot? I learned it in Canada. Uh, I went to a Lutheran school on Vancouver Island. Um, and then I did an apprenticeship with Nicola Lasinac uh, out of Vancouver. Um, and uh, I mean, after that, I worked for uh, Vintage Guitar, which is in Oslo. And that's where I did most of the repairs, you know, uh, that I've done. Um, okay, so we got two, we got some examples here of different um, uh, chipping. We got a, Little excess chipping here in the end, but you can see that this slot here is just a lot smoother. Um, this one here had chipping going up. Now this is easier to hide in the end, and I don't think any of this goes beyond uh, what's still under the fret. So I think I'm going to keep trying to pull them up. I just like to see that more than this. This doesn't look good to me, so um, I'm going to keep trying to pull them up. I like to keep the frets. I don't know if they have any value on the vintage market or not, but uh, I like to keep them for the customers. They can do whatever he wants with them. Uh, I'm just gonna, if, if I see any chips, I, I just like to put a little bit of glue uh, around the um, fret slots. I just, sometimes there's some hidden chips that haven't really uh, come up yet. And if there are, I wanna make sure that I've secured them. This is CA glue. And that's the that's a fancy word luthiers use for super glue. It's actually it's it's fantastic. Um, I mean, it sounds kind of you know super glue and crazy glue kind of sounds a little bit unprofessional. I think so. I like to say uh, cyano accurate, which is the technical term, but really it's just vanity. It's super glue. <laughs> Have you done any like big blunders on vintage guitars? I'll knock on. I don't think I don't think I have. <laughs> knock on wood. I, uh, I mean, it's 
when it's an old valuable guitar, I I charge extra actually uh, to do work uh, because it takes me it takes me longer uh, just because I'm trying to you know I'm I'm taking extra care that I don't any don't mess anything up and it takes you know about one and a half times as long yeah. um, as a normal refret and. But I mean, if you have a ten thousand dollar guitar, you know it's worth it for most people. So, yeah, you don't want to. Especially, I mean, these frets have been in since nineteen sixty. If you do a proper job now, maybe these frets that I'm installing will be there until, you know, what is it, two thousand fifty? You know, could be. Okay, so the super glue is already dry because um, of the accelerator. So now I'm going to take it back off again. I don't obviously I don't want that on top of the fretboard, and that will also give me an idea. Um, uh, about where you know that there are high points on the fretboard. I know for sure that right here we have a problem area. So um, yeah, I'm gonna get to it. Well, I got some 120 grit on this um, this aluminum uh, rod, and I'm gonna um, just quickly sand off the super glue. I'm not gonna try to level anything at all. I just wanna I want a fresh surface without any super glue, so I can measure it properly, and then I'm gonna do the leveling. You can see right away, as I started sanding, that it touches here quite a bit. And that's because this area is high, and that's because of the, the shims that were put under there. So here's a, that's a good example on you know, what not to do if you have a neck angle problem. The super glue is gone. Uh, there, you can see all, these, all the play wear that's here. I think that's beautiful, and I want to keep all of it. Um, so now I just put on some uh, super glue debonder to get some of the super glue out of the divots because I definitely want to keep those. I think uh, you know it's a part of the history of the fretboard, and uh, I think it's nice to keep that. Um, it kind of arched in this direction on the treble side and it kind of went like this on the bass side. So I'm trying to even that out a little with as little sanding as I can do. Uh, the hump is gone fortunately now and uh, it's not, I mean it's not even noticeable uh, that the material are off. Before I um, uh, polish up the fretboard and make it look nice again, I'm gonna um, saw a little bit into the slots. Um, it's just to create the kind of uh, um, the kind of uh, slot that I want. And uh, I also glued on this little thing right here, and that's just to make sure that I don't go deeper than what I need to. Uh, oftentimes, you'll see on vintage guitars that people have gone through the fretboard, and really, I don't think that's a very good look. So, um, so I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna stay within this. So I'm assuming that a refresh is the more like, difficult job that you do. Well, yeah, well, it's you can. It's kind of a bread and butter job, uh, so I do it quite often. Um, but they, I mean, it's something that I, you have to take kind of seriously because it, you know, it doesn't matter how good your guitar is if your frets aren't level, then it's not going to come through anyway. So um, I think that uh, you know, I. Maybe I do two refrets a week or something. And uh, you have to take it seriously, because if you mess up a refret, then you've messed up the guitar. So it takes a long time to do it. Um, anyway, it takes for a long time for me anyway. I'm pretty happy with the patina at this point. Um, I kept some of the divots. I mean, I could sand further if I would wanted to, but I don't, didn't want to. Uh, it's time to hammer in the frets. There's different ways to do that. Um, some people like to press the frets. I like to hammer the frets. Um, really doesn't matter. Um, whatever you prefer. Um, I used to work as a fretter at uh, Lerve, the guitar factory in Canada. And uh, they used to hammer for the fretting. So, you know, after a few hundred guitars, that's kind of what you get used to.
point now. Uh, and this far, it looks good. I'm still gonna glue it, and uh, I'm also gonna go over it just to make sure that everything's just lined up. I'm gonna do a fret dress at the end anyway, but I just wanna take you know, uh, the least amount of material off of it as I can. Uh, it's looking pretty good, they're glued in, and uh, I'm gonna start shaping the sides. Uh, I'm gonna start by cutting, and then I'm gonna file. This part that I'm doing here is strictly uh, cosmetic and um, I don't like to see fret ends that aren't uh, shaped the same way and sometimes you'll see fret ends that uh, are a bit crooked looking or uh, that just they just don't look the same and uh, so I'm just putting a tiny dab of CA glue and I will fill this little air gap that's between the rounded over fretboard uh, and the very straight fret that's and that's a, that's a point where um, uh, where you you can get some metal shavings sometimes sticking under and that really deforms the fret and, at the end and it doesn't look very good. So this is just a little trick um, that I do uh, and I just find that it, it comes out a little bit nicer. Flapping some various grits of sandpaper along the fret ends just to remove any of the file marks and any of the uh, previous grits. So obviously trying not to touch anything that I don't have to touch. And this really isn't taking off any wood, it's just polishing the metal. <laughs> After sanding uh, the fretboard, um, because of the hump here, it was more sanding done here. And that um, made the clay dots here white again, which is what they were um, when the guitar was made. Uh, but you can see that that doesn't match very well with this one, uh, which is a lot darker. And um, so I just, wanna, I just wanna add a little bit of stain onto them so it, it looks like it wasn't touched. just to break that real whiteness of the fresh um, clay and wipe it away before it gets too dark. It blends in pretty nicely, I'd say. I, I just find that I don't, I don't wanna introduce any smell or anything into the board that wasn't there. So I try to stay away from the lemon oils and stuff, but that's just simply because of the smell. Some people use um, uh, mineral oils or uh, uh, linseed oils. It, I, I don't think it matters all that much what you what you use. The wood doesn't need that much moisture. It's just it's just for me when I when I use it now. It's a matter of getting uh, evening out the look of the board after it's been sanded and you know introducing it just a little bit of shine to it. All that uh, work with the glue and the filing really paid off because. Um, I think I got a pretty even look uh, from one fret to the other. Um, and uh, I'm pretty happy with the patina also of the fretboard. So um, uh, I'm gonna call this a success and move on to the nut. Uh, I've made this uh, shim here uh, to replace all those little cardboard cutouts that, um, that used to be in the neck. And this is, it's a pretty substantial shim, uh, but jazz masters tend to need substantial shims. Um, and now it's got, we're kind of on to the setup part of the job. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna make this piece of bone fit into this slot and uh, shape it and cut string slots and everything. And then um, 
yeah, and then it's going to play, play again. Yeah, I'm trying to, I'm polishing it up to kind of a, uh, yeah, it's as shiny as I can get it. I'm going to stain this when I'm done because this is just too white for the rest of the guitar. Now, in order to set the proper height of the nut, I have to do a setup. So right now I'm just uh, kind of, I wouldn't say roughly, but just getting it, well, basically getting it set up on this end of the guitar so I can find the right height on this side of it. So um, that's, that's the task. This is a, a height gauge. So it just measures the height over the first fret. It helps me be accurate when I'm uh, when I'm setting up the the nut, so it kind of uh, it kind of measures and uh, zero it out and then squeeze down. It's now at thirty thousandths. That's still too high, so then I, I you know I have my measurements that I go down to and then. Yeah, so I've polished up the nut uh, to make that as shiny and nice as it can. I I try to make sure that the strings don't aren't buried too deep into the slot. Um, so after the polish, I, I kind of want to recreate the color that it had. I mean, the same yellowing happens to the nut that happens to the lacquer finish. So um, this is, you know, an amber color. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Pretty happy with that. Let's do why not. I don't want to go too deep into cleaning on vintage finishes, finishes. And that's just because, you know, the sweat and the grime and everything that's built up over time kind of turned into homogenous uh, mass. So I find oftentimes when you try to clean vintage guitars, you'll start uh, you'll start uh, cleaning an area, and then you really just drag in all the sweat and grime out, uh, and it turns into this haze. And I always find that it just looks better, a little bit dirty. Uh, obviously, any surface stuff, I'm just going to brush off and just lightly take a cloth over. But um, I want to stay away from the finish. That's just something you can't get back. Thank mm -hmm. you. 